Kate Goslin. Am I right? Vlog every damn day. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, today is Thursday and that means it is time to review another episode of Once Upon a Time. Today I am going to be talking about the episode Red Handed and I'm not going to even lie to you, I've seen this episode before. So what happened with this episode is before I even started watching Once Upon a Time, I happened to be over at Jacob's house and this episode was on TV and I was watching it the entire time and I knew that I was going to spoil myself for the future but it was like... I love the story of Red Riding Hood. I took a death and dying class a couple of years ago in my community college and we actually talked about Red Riding Hood and about the symbolism of why she wears a red hood. And back when the story was written, the original intention was to kind of portray this aura of like childbirth and life and death because red is a very symbolic color in that aspect of life and death because it usually involves a woman's period. And back in the day, that was a common color that was used to reflect a sort of maturity that a woman had begun her menstruation cycle and that she was able to continue to bear children. And in the original story, Red Riding Hood actually does the deed with Grandma for some reason. You know, maybe that was okay, who was actually the wolf, and then the wolf eats her. So the original Red Riding Hood story is really dark, but I love the reinterpretations of Red Riding Hood throughout the years. I love movies like Hoodwinked, like what was that movie with Amanda Seyfried where it was Red Riding Hood? I, I, th I want to say it was like, just it was called that, I don't even remember. And watching this episode the very first time that I saw it, I knew that the wolf was going to be someone unexpected and I, and I knew that it was going to be someone that was slightly expected at the same time. Because usually in Red Riding Hood retellings, the wolf or the bad guy is always someone that you kind of are suspecting, but someone who you're not expecting at the same time. Spoiler alert, in Hoodwinked, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's a cartoon retelling of Red Riding Hood with a bunch of different perspectives from different characters within the forest, and we end up finding out that the bad guy is actually a rabbit. And in the movie with Amanda Seyfried, we actually find out that the wolf is her father and we're led to believe that it's different characters throughout the whole thing. So when I was watching this original episode, I was like, this is going to be someone who we are least expecting. And I immediately pinned Red and I figured that it was going to be her, but I was so excited at the end to find out that it actually was. And it was kind of tragic too. And when I first saw it, I was like, why is... Snow White was Red Riding Hood, I don't get this, but now watching the entire series up until this point and kind of understanding where all the characters are, I'm understanding that this episode happens shortly before Snow White meets Prince James. She is kind of running around looking for somewhere stable and she's run across Red Riding Hood. The two of them talk about love and relationships and Snow White kind of muddles up everything. We find out that the reason why Red wears her red hood is because it actually keeps her from turning. That this wolf ism is a genetic thing and has happened to many of her family members throughout the lineage including her grandmother and her grandfather. I really, again, I liked this episode. It was such a filler episode, but it was one of my more favorite fillers. Actually, no, this is my favorite filler episode because I feel like the plot progression within Fairy Tale World was more interesting than the Dreamy Nova thing. While that was cute, it just didn't like grab me and I think it's because it was such a stark difference from what I know of the grumpy character and while it gave a lot of depth to him as a character I feel like there was a lot that was going on that really could have just been told in such a short time and I was really more interested in what was going on in Storybrooke. This time around, I feel like we had a nice balance of everything going on in Storybrooke as well as everything in Fairy Tale World. In Storybrooke, we had this long progression where Red or Ruby in Storybrooke is now working for Emma for a very short time because she and Granny have run into a difference of opinions and through working with Emma, she ends up finding out that she actually does want to stay working with Granny. Anyways, Henry tells Emma that Ruby is 
Red Riding Hood. And it was funny, they did a nice little poke at it um, after she had lost her job with Granny. She was looking for new jobs and Henry was like, oh, you can go deliver things with a yellow basket. And I thought that was cute. It was a nice little poke at the original story and I liked that. Emma kind of makes her a deputy and so Ruby is helping out Emma with just menial things in the town and decides to enlist her in finding David after David's gone missing and he's kind of gone into a weird episode. Then she asks Ruby to go out into the forest and go to the toll bridge because that is where David went the first time that he kind of went into this weird psychic fuge where he didn't know who he was or where he was going or anything like that and Ruby ends up going out and finds a little box out in the the dirt next to the toll bridge and inside of it is a heart. Now I am under the opinion that this is Catherine's heart and that Regina has something to do with this because taking hearts is kind of her thing so I have seen so far and plot twist big shock at the end is that inside this box are fingerprints of Mary Margaret's speaking of her I thought there was a nice little wink and nudge to her within fairy tale world when Red encountered Snow White she didn't want to tell Red what her name was and so she called herself Margaret but then was like ew and then changed her name to Mary so I thought it was funny that they included her storybook name in fairy tale world and it was just like all the little pokes into other things throughout this episode were really nice and refreshing for me. This was one of my more favorite episodes to this point because I feel like there was a lot that happened in Fairytale World and a lot that happened in Storybrooke. Things coincided with each other and I feel like we had a lot more progression in plots and it didn't take like 45 minutes to get from you know one side of the jungle to the other like in Lost where I loved that show to death, but there were just some episodes where it was like literally them walking a half a mile for 50 minutes and no real plot progression was made. And I feel like that has been every episode up until this point. Not every, just most all of them. And this one was just a very nice change of pace for me that it moved fast, the plot progressions happened quickly, and everything about this episode was just fun. It didn't seem contrived, it didn't seem like there was anything that was pushed too hard, and it seemed like everyone really enjoyed working on this episode. I am excited to see where the next episode goes because now we have this issue where Mary Margaret is being framed and it's possible that she is going to be tried and possibly even convicted for the murder of Catherine unless Emma can do something to fix it. And we don't have that many more episodes before the season ends so I'm thinking that things are about to pick up real quick. And season two is not on Netflix. I'm so upset about that. So that is the end for this video, and I will see you guys all again tomorrow. I hope you're having a wonderful night or day or whatever it is when you're watching this video. And I'll see you all again tomorrow, and have a wonderful life. Peace out. Take care, boss.